Oh, well, I'll start with the first part of that question, which is uh, what do I think of those guys? I mean, they've they've come in with a lot of maturity, especially for some young guys. Um, they jumped right in in terms of the offseason program with the summer workouts and all that kind of stuff. And actually, Terrell got here um, back in January. So he's been here a little bit longer than Kamari. So he, he had a little bit lay of the land, so to speak, before we got to the fall camp. But those guys have done a good job in terms of maturity, in terms of showing up on time. Uh, paying attention to meetings. And that's that's what you love to see out of young guys. Uh, but you don't always know if you're going to get that until you start coaching. But, so they've done a good job there. And then uh, on top of that, as far as athletically, I mean, they're they're both talented. Um, very different players. Kamari's more of a natural tailback, per se, because that's what he's always played. Uh, TJ's a little bit uh, jack of all trades. He's played receiver, you know, slot. He's played quarterback. He's played running back. So he's got a pretty broad skill set returner. Uh, so they're different in that regard, but um, yeah, so that's kind of how they how they fit in, so to speak, or how they have made the transition. But as far as what that what their role would be when Caleb and Jazz get get back, I mean, that's to be determined. Who knows? Um, one, you never know how long an injury can last. Uh, you hope it's only a, a week or so, but we don't we have no idea. So I just try to tell those guys, hey, stay ready, and I think they've done a good job with that. And I try to tell the entire room to stay ready because, as you can see, it's been different people every week. Um, but they're ready, and we'll we'll cross that bridge as far as roles when when those other guys do return. Uh, next question is from Scott Doctorman. Yeah, Liddell, I've been really fascinated watching the the way you guys have run the ball this year, and partly because of uh, schematics. Uh, when you have, uh, you know, a lot of it seems like a lot of gap and a lot of counter versus the past where I was just kind of dabbled in. Um, you know, how does that, you think, emphasize some of the runners on your roster and then the why they've been so successful in running that scheme? Um, I think it's twofold. I think it, I think it emphasizes the the type of um, linemen that we have, too. Uh, aggressive guys that like to pull and hit. I think we have those guys that, that want to do that on the offensive line, and it's something that we tried to work on a lot back in the spring Uh try to add that to our arsenal as far as the run game so we so we could have it in the fall. And I think you're starting to see some of those dividends pay off. And then when you talk about the back specifically, um, I, I'm partial to downhill runners, uh, I think because I was one myself. So uh, on the recruiting trail, I think when I what what I gravitate to is guys that really like to attack, 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 attack the defense. And I think that's what you're seeing out of our runners are guys that are getting downhill and trying to trying to be aggressive with the defense. Uh, next question is from Chad Leistico. Hey, good morning, Liddell. Um, college or pro, what's the craziest environment you've ever played in? And and how do you uh, communicate to your young freshman going into to this uh, what to expect on Saturday? Oh, good question. Uh, college or pro? I'd say in college, you know, it's always tough when you go over to Iowa State just to the heat of rivalry. But I've also been up to Penn State um, back in 2000. We were fortunate enough to – get out of there with the with the win and overtime. Um that was a that was a pretty pretty crazy environment. But when I think of the pros, I think of places like, you know, Dallas, just because of the rivalry between us and, and Washington or Washington and Dallas at the time. Philly, the Philly fans are always pretty brutal. So I played in a few venues that that get a little loud and a little crazy. And sorry I, if I yeah. missed the part of your yeah. question. Yeah. Well, I mean obviously Kamari Terrell going into this crazy environment as true freshmen how do you kind of communicate your experience to them and help relax them going into to this huge stage well it, it's hard to really put into words how that and what that environment is going to feel like until they get there so you try to tell talk to them about it. and I know coach Ferentz has done the same thing he's been talking to our players all week because we have a number of players that have never played up there before um so it's going to be a new environment for not just the backs but more than a few people on the team but until they actually get in that environment and feel it for themselves, uh, they won't really know what we're trying to uh, communicate to them. But the only thing I really try to make sure that I'm getting across to my players is make sure you take care of the details now. Get all those I's dotted, all the T's crossed, because if you don't have a good sense or good feel for the game plan now, in front of 100,000 people is not the time to be trying to figure it out. So I just try to make sure that, the, listen, Lock in and practice. Make sure you get all those things ironed out so that when you get into that stadium and, and it's loud, you're, at the end of the day, it's just it's just treating like practice, just people watching. All right, next question is from Adam Jacoby. Sorry, I was on mute. Coach Betts, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, 
So going back to last week, uh, specifically the touchdown that LaShawn Williams scored on that screen pass, uh, one, is there anything that really sort of stood out to you on the play, whether it's something that uh, LaShawn did or anybody else on the play? And then is that indicative in any way of the growth that he's made from last season to this season, just his ability to make that play? Is that something that's sort of new this year? Great question, actually. As as you as you asked that question, I'm kind of thinking back to a moment last year where um, we had a screen called, I think it was the first or the second game, I can't remember, and it was LeSean that was in there, and his guy blitzed, and 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 he didn't he didn't quite see it at the time uh, to know to bluff that guy and and then slip him to get out, not to get in too much of the schematics, but the exact same scenario came up this past Saturday where his guy in protection is blitzing, and LeSean now a year later has enough wherewithal to understand, hey, I need to go set this guy, bluff him, make him think that we're actually trying to pass the ball downfield and then slip him out to the flats. And that's exactly what happened. It was a great play call, great execution by the guys. And, you know, now it's him and um, and Logan Jones running down the sideline by themselves. So it was a w- well-executed play, uh, well, well, well-timed well, call play because they were blitzing too. So you, ne- you always want to get a screen to a blitz and it worked out great. Uh, Terrell, just what all do you remember about recruiting each one of them and kind of what stood out initially about them? Uh, well, with Kamari, Kamari's kind of down in my in my recruiting area um, of Florida. Actually, he's in Coach Hodges' area. That's on, on the other side of the state. But um, we both have some familiar ties down in that area. So with Kamari, I knew a bunch of people or a bunch of coaches in the area that uh, knew him personally and had played against him. And everyone spoke highly about his character his running style. And then when I, once I got a chance to see him in practice, uh, everything that people had kind of advertised, it, it stood out to me. So um, for me, he was, he was a bit of a no brainer. He's not the biggest kid, but he runs hard. He's, he's extremely talented and a little bit different with um, Terrell. Terrell, we kind of came uh, stumbled upon later. It's not that I didn't know about him, but he was already uh, verbally committed to Purdue. And then when things kind of went south at Purdue, coaching change and all that stuff, I kind of reached back out to him, followed up, and that's kind of where his recruiting. So his recruiting was a little bit later in the process than um, than Kamari's. But once I watched the tape and I saw that he had such a broad skill set, you know, with running receiver, quarterback, uh, running back, I knew he kind of fit something different that we didn't have in the room. I, I felt like at the moment, which is a guy that could do a little bit of everything, and that was that was what drew me to him. All right, coach. Next question is from Elliot Clough. Hey, Coach Betts. So, um, obviously, the the run game wasn't as maybe as productive as you guys would have liked in those first two games. Um, and then, obviously, LeSean has this big game, and and two freshmen come in and are productive on on this last Saturday. Um, obviously, uh, Western Michigan and Penn State are are two different, very different opponents. Um, I guess, how do you take that uh, momentum? Or uh, what you, I guess, what did you see up front that that was working so well for the offensive line and, and made things work for your guys? And how do you take that into to Penn State? Um, as far as the guys up front, I think the confidence is growing with those guys. They have a, a year under their belt. A lot of those guys are returner, returning starters. Um, and Coach Barnett's doing a great job with them. And I think we just had a good game plan coming into the, to the past week for that team. And those guys just jailed and, and and just rolled them out of there. I think we have an aggressive line that doesn't mind hitting people. And that's not something that you can always say about uh, each line every year is that we do have a bunch of guys that are willing to put their shoulder pads and helmets on people. And when you have a line like that, sometimes you got to let them roll. And I think we did that last week. And we try, and to your point, we understand Penn State and Western Michigan are two, are two different teams. I'm not, that's no knock on, on Western Michigan or anything, but Penn State is ranked where they are for a reason, and we don't take that lightly. But we also feel like we're we're quite capable of getting the job done if need be. All right, next question is from Chad Leistico. Uh, it looked like uh, Jazz Patterson was doing a really, really nice job as a, a third down back um, against Iowa State. Obviously, you lose that. Would LeSean kind of be your main blocking back? And how about those the two true freshmen? Are they uh, – is one or, one or the other maybe acclimating to that that blocking back role? Uh, as needed? I think, well, I've, I've, I've tried to get both of them reps uh, in those scenarios because anybody can be hurt or down at any given moment. Um, but to go back to the beginning of your question, LeSean is a guy that has experience in that role, uh, really first, second, and third down. So he would be the first candidate in, in that situation. 
Uh, but with the other two, uh, I don't really see one as uh, ahead of the other one in terms of third down. I think they're both capable. We've worked uh, long and hard, especially back during training camp. We did one-on-ones with linebackers and, with, uh, and pass protection uh, probably more, more often than they wanted to at times. But it's to build for these moments. So they're all capable of doing it. Uh, next question is from Scott Docterman. Yeah, I wanted to just ask you kind of that fine line of emphasizing the really important fundamental parts of this game, you know, whether, whether it's ball security, especially at a place like Penn State, you don't know how many possessions you're going to get and how, how, the, how important each possession is, but then not have them overthink those moments and just play freely. Uh, how do you approach those two scenarios uh, just to make sure that mentally they understand the importance of it, but they don't make it get into their head at the wrong time? Uh, I don't think it really, I mean, just from my experience working with these guys, I don't really think it gets into their head in terms of uh, the reminders about ball security. Cause I do that during the game. Sometimes if I see the ball uh, sometimes getting loose or what I perceive as being loose, I'll, I'll yell at them out on the, while they're on the field. Hey, and I'll give them this sign. Like, and they know what I'm talking about. So I'm always trying to preach that to them because especially on the road, you just can't afford turnovers and we don't want to do anything that's self-inflicting. Um, if they if they get the ball out of our hands, it needs to be a heck of a play by them, not something that we did carelessly. And um, just reemphasizing that, I don't think it I don't think it puts any more anxiety on those guys because that's what we preach every day anyway is to is ball security, whether it's the backs, quarterbacks, receivers, everyone's getting that same uh, reinforcements every day.